Howdy. Why? So, do you think you can keep a secret? Mm -mm. Yeah, me neither. And clearly, the internet can't either. So I've compiled this fun list of fast food secrets for hopefully you and I to get a few laughs from. So let's check out 10 strange fast food secrets. Why? And if you like, feel free to share your opinion on these now not so secret secrets in the comments. Anyway, let's begin. And starting with number 10, we have the McNuggets chicken secret. If you've heard McNuggets mentioned on the internet before, you may have heard this rumor. Hey man, did you know chicken McNuggets have like 0% real chicken in them? Man, I'm, I'm, I'm just so smart right now. Uh, sorry, by the way, Nin's sick, so I had to fill in for her for this one. Someone even claimed that this pink slime stuff was chicken nuggets. In fact, this rumor was so widespread, the McDonald's even hired the late and great Grant Imahara to discuss it in their commercials. All right, time to suit up and boot up. While the secret isn't exactly pink slime, we'll get to that later, there is a kernel of truth to the idea that McNuggets aren't 100% chicken. It actually has to do with why McNuggets are so tasty. Like Grant sees here, McDonald's does start by using 100% chicken in their McNuggets. However, they then cover each nugget in two coats of batter, seasoning, and oil. And this is where the claim has some truth. So much fat, oil, and batter is used that one nugget only ends up about 45% chicken. Wait, what? Hmm. This is part of what gives McDonald's nuggets that nice crispiness and texture. So technically, in manufacturing, it is still 100% chicken, but the end product is only 45% chicken. But that being said, this really isn't that strange a practice. It happens in grocery stores too. If you go to the frozen food section, most of the nuggets there are going to be layered in oil and batter as well. So technically, grocery store nuggets aren't 100% chicken either. And honestly, if a person really wants 100% chicken breast, why go to a fast food restaurant? Go to the deli section of your supermarket and just get some straight up chicken right there. I suppose if nuggets were 100% chicken, they wouldn't be called chicken nuggets. They'd just be called chicken. Then there's the notorious pink slime rumor. This rumor started all the way back in 2010. Apparently, the whole pink slime idea came from a Jamie Oliver episode at the time, where Jamie was showing school kids how chicken McNuggets were made. Some of the processed foods that you love are made from the bits you don't like. The actual slime is just a produce known as lean, finely textured beef. All it really is, is a meat that's been heated and then sent through a centrifuge to separate the fat from the lean meat. So even though it may not look so hot, it is still very much meat. The meat is then treated with a gas to kill any E. coli, salmonella, or other bacteria. So this pink slime is not only meat, but very lean, low fat, and healthy meat. And now that I know how it's made, I actually don't mind the idea of nuggets being made out of this pink slime stuff. I say, bring on the pink slime. But tragically, in 2011, due to all the bad press it got, McDonald's stopped using this pink slime completely. I'm sorry, I'm disappointed too. What a shame. I guess now we'll have to settle for regular looking chicken in our nuggets. And for number nine, our secret is the fake grill marks. With a lot of fast food, much of the appeal is visual presentation. And that's no exception for fast food meat. When you peer under the bun to see what you're biting into, you might have noticed what look like grill marks. And yep, I'm afraid to say those grill marks are as fake as unicorns, Bigfoot, and gargoyles. No, clearly ghosts are real. You're totally there, aren't you, Boo? Yeah. Basically, places like Burger King are known for freshly grilled burgers. And how are you meant to know the burgers are grilled unless they have fake grill marks on them? It's a similar story for many frozen pre-cooked meats. For example, that chicken you get on your Subway sandwich, it also has fake grill marks purely to look tastier. And for me anyway, I think it kind of works. I've got to admit, fake or not, when I see these grill marks on my burger, I do tend to think freshly grilled. Despite me literally seeing the employee put it in the microwave like 60 seconds earlier. I guess that's all my silly monkey brain needs. I think when it comes to meals, we first visually taste our food then we actually taste it. Sometimes though, a bad taste just can't be hidden. And cut. I almost swallowed some of the juice. Food stylist Claudia stated, 
It's important to see grill marks on the food products, because that's what makes it grilled, even if the brand uses a smoke flavour and doesn't grill the meat. But again, it's not only fast food restaurants that do this. If you go to the frozen food section of your grocery store, you'll see fake grill marks everywhere, particularly in things like chicken breast and frozen burgers. Because if you're presented with a row of chicken in the frozen food section, companies think you're probably going to steer towards the box with the tastier looking chicken. And apparently at least in focus groups, grill marks make meat look tastier. And for number eight, we have McDonald's making bubblegum flavored broccoli. I got a quick story for you. Way back in the year 2014, somewhere far away in a mysterious press meeting, the McDonald's CEO was suddenly asked out of the blue what the McDonald's chain was doing to help kids eat healthier. The CEO had this to say. We, uh, uh, we made the fries smaller. Yeah, yeah, we redesigned our milk jugs. <laughs> I'm sorry, but how does redesigning your milk jugs count as being healthier? Stumbling, the CEO added another brilliant way than making kids' meals healthier. Oh yeah, we made bubblegum flavored broccoli. Yeah. <laughs> it may have been healthier, but by Jeebus, it wasn't tastier. The CEO tested the bubblegum broccoli on children and found that the little taste testers were not pleased. Our CEO friend discovered the kids were confused by the taste. Nah, really? Broccoli that tastes like bubblegum? I can't see anything confusing about that. According to the CEO, it wasn't all that. It tasted bad. But he went on to defend the McDonald's menu options. He stated that, McDonald's sells the most salad of any American restaurant chain. We're amazing, aren't we? Yeah, they sell the most salads, probably because they serve 9.1 billion customers a year. That's a lot of people, and some of them are gonna buy salads. And maybe they sell the most salads because their salads are so ridiculously calorific. But more on that later. Though to be fair, I do think the CEO brought up a fair point later. He stated that parents have to make food choices for their kids themselves. And if you go to Macca's, you probably know you're not signing up for the most healthy of options. You could say they have a responsibility given the amount of influence they have on children, but I think that's an entire sociology lesson in itself. And coming in at number seven, Secret free meals at Chick-fil-A. While I may personally have a lot of negative feelings towards Chick-fil-A, the restaurant does have a fun secret for anyone willing to go to an opening restaurant. When a new Chick-fil-A restaurant opens, the first 100 customers are given free meals for a year. Well, free meals with a fair few catches, but we'll get to those later. There's a small collection of people who know of this free meal secret, and they work very hard to get these free meal cards. In fact, they're so dedicated that they camp out from 6 p.m. the night before all the way to 6 a.m. the next day. This really shows an amazing dedication to Chick-fil-A sandwiches. I wonder how that conversation goes down anyway. So man, you're telling me if I stay out here overnight in a tent in the freezing cold, I'll get a medium fries, a medium drink, and a chicken sandwich yeah. once a week for a year. Yeah. That sounds amazing, man. I'll do it. The prize is apparently worth $320. So I guess all those sandwiches add up over the year. But I don't know. I've heard of people camping out for like games and smartphones, but a chicken sandwich? I, I guess I'll never fully understand America. But you know, maybe I'm just looking at this too practically. Maybe it's less about the value and just more about the adventure of it. Camping out with fellow fans of Chick-fil-A under the stars to get a secret fast food card. Actually, it does sound kind of cool. And for number six, we have... When Taco Bell flopped twice in Mexico. Taco Bell. When you hear it, you might think spicy Mexican food. So the home of Mexican food, Mexico, probably loves it, right? Well, not so much. Many Mexicans never seem to like Taco Bell at all. No tiene chiste. No sabe nada. Mm -mm. The Taco Bell restaurant chain has flopped twice in Mexico. Once in 1992, and again in 2007. Why though? To someone like me, I thought Taco Bell was authentic Mexican food. But it turns out it's not quite as authentic to many actual Mexicans. Apparently, many local Mexicans didn't consider Taco Bell to be real Mexican food. They thought the Taco Bell menu was just too Americanized. Mexico already has proper, authentic taco carts. And it turns out taco carts remain much cheaper than Taco Bell's food. 
For example, in 2017, it cost about $10 for a meal at Taco Bell, while the authentic street taco lunch in Mexico averaged around $2. So for many Mexicans, it was obvious to just go for the cheaper, authentic street vendor food, instead of a sit-down meal of expensive, Americanized tacos. And this is nothing against Taco Bell. Many people in other countries love Taco Bell. It just wasn't the kind of Mexican that Mexicans were looking for. And that's fine. Globally, Taco Bell's really become its own identity. It's now created a lot of original menu items that were certainly not made in Mexico, such as Mexican pizzas, because it's America and apparently everything needs to be turned into a pizza. Fajitas originated in Texas, and believe it or not, the hard shell taco is actually a USA original. Isn't that crazy? I remember first trying them and thinking, oh, this is so foreign. In the 90s, Taco Bell managed to last two years in Mexico before all their restaurant chains had shut down. In the 2000s, they managed three years before they all shut down. Amazingly, even imitation Taco Bell shops had more success than Taco Bell. Like this imitation Taco Bell in Tijuana. Despite this place having zero running water, I guess Taco Bell couldn't compete with a Mexican restaurant run by an actual Mexican. Or three for one dollar tacos. That's pretty cool too. Anyway, good on Taco Bell for at least giving it the old college try. Hopefully they'll be fine with owning the Mexican food market in every other place in the world except Mexico. And for number five we have... The real reason McDonald's ice cream machines are always broken. Ever found yourself feeling like a soft serve at McDonald's, only to discover that the soft serve machine is, of course, broken? It's actually surprisingly common. In fact, this has happened in such frequency that it's become a meme for McDonald's. Okay, can I just get one vanilla ice cream cone? It actually just broke. The frequently broken machines even spurred the website mcbroken.com. Here you can see all the currently broken ice cream machines in America. When I checked, 12% were currently broken. Even Wendy's took a jab at McDonald's on Twitter about this. When McDonald's asked what people would tweet on the McDonald's Twitter, Wendy's responded, McDonald's, where the things that should be fresh are frozen, and the things that should be frozen are out of order. Oh no, he didn't. But to be fair, McDonald's even roasts itself about its ice cream machines, which is in rather good spirits of them. In one tweet they said, We have a joke about our soft serve machines, but we're worried it won't work. <laughs> so why? Why are there always so many broken ice cream machines? Well, until 2017, only the Taylor Company manufactured McDonald's ice cream machines. And Taylor made one specific model exclusively for McDonald's, the dreaded C602 model. And the cleaning method on this C602 model is incredibly long and arduous. So chances are at McDonald's, if someone tells you the ice cream machine is broken, it's probably actually just having its stupidly long four hour self clean. However, because Taylor believes this four hour cleaning time is just not long enough, sometimes it'll give staff an error after doing that four hour clean. An error with no explanation as to what went wrong. Don't you just love when a generic error occurs with no explanation? They try to clean it on the midnight shift, but of course if they get the wonderful generic error, they have to clean it again during the day and just hope it works. And of course if it doesn't work a second time, they can only call one type of technician. A Taylor technician, of course. Some conspiracies believe the Taylor company deliberately doesn't fix this error so they can get more money from repairs. But I don't know, that's getting a little out there for me. But either way, McDonald's may have a monopoly on the fast food market, but apparently their ice creams are monopolized by the Taylor company. Ooh, ha 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 ha. There have been some attempts to overthrow this bizarre ice cream monopoly, but for now, it looks like we'll just have to go down the road and try the other Maccas for our soft serve. And coming in at number four, the I'm loving it deal. I'm loving it. To this day, McDonald's has created one of the most powerful earworms I have ever heard. And maybe if I hum a few bars, you might remember it. It's basically their theme song. 
For nearly 20 years, this song has been played endlessly in ads. And it all started way back in 2003, when McDonald's sales were dwindling a bit. So they decided to try marketing to tweens more. And they thought former InSync member Justin Timberlake was just the man they needed. So McDonald's began an international $1.5 billion campaign, the fabled I'm Lovin' It campaign. Timberlake was paid $6 million to sing the I'm Lovin' It jingle. The song went on to be an instant hit. It even reached the music top 20 in Greece, Ireland, and the Netherlands. Apparently, McDonald's was even sponsoring Timberlake's tours. Although it seemed like Timberlake was lovin' it, he later went on to say he regretted the deal with McDonald's. He never explained why though. But if I were to guess why, maybe it's because fast food has played such a strong role in the obesity epidemic. Perhaps Timberlake felt responsible for putting McDonald's back on the map. And personally, I think I get that. As personally, I try to choose my sponsors very carefully. I don't claim to always get it right, but McDonald's and Coca-Cola are two companies I've sworn to never accept a sponsorship from. Though regardless, McDonald's certainly didn't regret the deal. With the I'm Lovin' It song release, their market share skyrocketed, and the McDonald's brand image was changed forever. It was this whole I'm Lovin' It deal that started the whole entire modern slick McDonald's image we know today. And that image may never have happened without Justin Timberlake. On a side note, I don't know what the general opinion is, but I actually like this song. By the way, what's your sign? I bet it is compatible with mine. It genuinely sounds like a blast from the past, like a 2000s rap song. Throughout the whole video, I was looking out for those ever ubiquitous golden arches, but never saw them. Maybe in 50 years, they'll change the song again. But ever since the Timberlake deal, this song is McDonald's almost as much as the golden arches are. And coming in at number three, the misleading free range claims. You've probably seen it about before. Free range is a common word in the fast food industry, or even in just buying some eggs at the local grocery store. There's nothing inherently wrong about people wanting less suffering in the world, it's respectable. But I think there is something wrong with companies tricking people with buzzwords. Personally, I love the taste of chicken, and clearly I'm not the only one. Because in the USA, 22 million chickens are eaten per day. If you're curious, that's about 8 billion chickens a year and about 254 chickens every second. And some people would rather those chickens live a little more pleasant a life before they become meals. These guys may only have about 4 grams of neural brain mass, but as I said, I think that's a respectable wish. And a compliment to our own 1.3 kilogram neural brain matter. While I don't personally lose sleep about how a chicken is treated, I respect that people want to show more kindness. Unfortunately, when you look at the fine print, the difference between a free-range chicken and a regular chicken is pretty minuscule. When you think free-range, you might at first visualize a chicken on a farm doing its thing, walking around freely in the grass, pecking the ground, and being a pinhead. And that's understandable you might visualize that. It's also what the fast food industry wants a person to visualize. But in reality, any chicken can be free range as long as it heeds to a couple of flimsy rules. A free range chicken must be able to move about freely. And by move about freely, I mean it must have a minimum of 1.25 square feet of floor space. So for example, this is considered a free range farm. Yep, that's it. Out there all pink and naked, feathery and naked, that's what we're paying extra for. Doesn't really match the images of picturesque farms and happy chickens strolling about freely, does it? When the producer of Super Size Me started his own fast food restaurant, he really didn't have to do much to make his chickens free range either. All he had to do was put a small outside caged opening at the end of his indoor chicken farm. He was as surprised as viewers were. So yeah, the whole free-range chicken thing can just be a buzzword with very little actual meaning behind it. In fact, some studies have found free-range chickens can die more frequently and carry more diseases than caged chickens. Because if they are free-range, then the chickens are more likely to be exposed to predators, bacteria, and disease. Their free-range eggs even have a higher likelihood of fecal contamination. Free-range hens also need to eat more in order to keep warm and to move around more. And an 8 billion chicken a year, that can lead to a noticeably larger carbon footprint. But that's not the story we're getting. 
That being said, if you like free range chicken and you already know all this, more power to you. I guess the little pinheads aren't expecting much, and I guess this is technically a little improvement on their lives. And for number two we have... McDonald's salads having more calories than a Big Mac. This has been something that has bothered me for years, so damn it, I want to talk about it. Far too many fast food salads are managing more calories than the burgers they're meant to replace. For example, take the double kale salad from the McDonald's healthy menu. That sounds pretty frickin' healthy, right? Well, not so much. The kale salad has more fat and calories than a double Big Mac. And not the good kind of fats either, the saturated kind. Kale may have gone in and out of trends, but it remains a healthy food. So the big question I want to ask McDonald's here is... Why does everything you touch turn to garbage? I guess they cover their salads in sauces and fried chicken to try and give it more flavor? But what's the point if it somehow ends up worse than the burgers? McDonald's claims on its website that the Keep Calm Caesar on chicken salad contains real parmesan petals and a nutrient-rich lettuce blend with kale. But unless you tell them to hold the chicken, mayonnaise, and any salad dressing, you've got yourself a 500 calorie or 2000 kilojoules salad. To put that in perspective, that's about the calories of half a full-size pizza. Even their Greek salad amounts to 420 calories and 26 grams of fat. And that's about the same calories and fat as a double cheeseburger. In 2017, McDonald's CEO made a declaration. We're introducing kale to our menu. Hooray! We plan to turn McDonald's into a modern, progressive burger company. When CBC Canada pointed out what a calorific dumpster fire of a salad they were selling, a spokesperson for McDonald's had this to say in response. To make our menu healthier, customers have the choice to have their salad without dressing or chicken. They can even have their burgers without a bun. Uh, no McDonald's, a burger without a bun is not a burger. A burger without a bun is a piece of meat. I, I really feel like McDonald's, of all companies, should understand what a burger is. I'm all for offering healthier menu choices, but there's a big difference between actually offering healthier options and fooling your customers into thinking they're having healthier options. I'm sorry, I think this whole thing just bothers me on a personal level, as I'm someone who does order the salads in restaurants. And in order to eat something that's not 500 calories, I should not have to order a straight bowl of lettuce and tomato and nothing else. When someone goes to a fast food restaurant and they try to make a healthy choice, they should not be punished for that. The fast food restaurant should not be lacing their salads with excessive fat, sugar, and calories. You can do it, McDonald's. I know you can. You definitely, definitely have the money for it. I know you can figure out how to make a salad that is healthy, tasty, and less calories than your double burgers. We believe in you, McDonald's. Well, yeah, okay, not really. And for the number one strange fast food secret, the reason fast food looks so good in advertisements. This one was actually less well known than I thought. Though in Canada anyway, McDonald's has been pretty transparent about this one. You see, there's a little trend on the internet showing the perfect picturesque foods you see in the fast food ads alongside the often not so good looking food we actually get. Well, I actually don't know if it's a trend. It's a trend in my videos anyway. These perfect foods we see in the fast food menus, or the shiny, pristine, colorful foods in the ads, they probably look pretty tasty to some people. But in reality, if you ate one of these, it would probably taste like candle wax. These patties are just plastic. These display foods are often changed in strange ways or touched up with things like paint or fiberglass. It can take hours for trained professionals to make these inedible fast foods look perfect, but they probably wouldn't taste very good. As this commenter said, never in my life have I ever been served a quarter pounder that looks anywhere close to this. But that's actually probably a good thing. Many fast food employees still try their best to make a quality meal. But fast food employees just aren't going to be able to replicate these display things in the 30 seconds they've got. They're probably overworked and three orders behind as is. And there's probably a stupid machine continually beeping in their ears behind them. I swear, McDonald's has more incessant beeps than a hospital intensive care unit. Anyway, according to McDonald's Canada, 
The core ingredients of these display burgers is technically the same, but they certainly don't look the same. The photo shoot staff then go on to Photoshop these display burgers afterwards often enhancing the colors and removing any mistakes that happen in production. So next time I see that beautiful burger with flames and perfectly juicy meat, I'll try and remember all the paint and fiberglass on that inedible burger. My crappy burger may not be as pretty, but at least it's edible. I feel like it could be the new motto for McDonald's. McDonald's, our burgers may not be pretty, but at least they're edible. Probably anyway. And with that, we've reached the end. I hope you've enjoyed this collection of strange fast food secrets. And if not, I appreciate your time and at least maybe you found them interesting. Either way, thanks for watching and hopefully I might see you next time. Bye bye. And continuing from last time, thank you to the members and the super members. Morgan, Grace, Taylor22222, Lost and Michael Sharvis, 